I set up the depthing tool to take the month wheel and uh, the uh, 24, sorry, the 12 hour wheel here with the pins on here. So there's 21 and 42 on here, and that gives me a full one day for every revolution, one day and one night for every revolution of this wheel. So there's one pin that sticks out of here that um, goes onto the outside of the big disc. So I was slightly nervous about this. Um, I've already made a mess of this wheel and I had to do it a second time. But fortunately the depth thing is absolutely perfect. So that's very nice. Um, in fact it's the, the power is applied on this wheel. So that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. Um, and then the depth thing is 79 difficult to do with the ruler 79.02 so if I set up 79.02 it's easy to mark out on the frame where this is going to go and I can reliably drill this and fix it in without any more effort one thing about the depthing tool I haven't mentioned is of course what you can do is to take these points, turn them round and use it like a divider so that you can actually scribe the uh, distance exactly off here. Um, the um, dimension that I calculated um, from the little table I've done of the wheels was 79.017 so it's exactly what it should be. So that's good news. <coughs> I've glued together two pieces of 6mm ply um, and that's just a little bit thicker than I needed so I just turned it down a little bit on the outside um, and um, my problem was that this is 235mm in diameter and that's exactly the largest size I can fit in the lathe. Um, I can't get this the um, drill far enough in the in the lathe to be able to drill into the end of it, but I could get to the end to mark it. So I've marked it with 31 divisions, and I'm going to drill them all individually uh, in the drill press. And it's quite straightforward to do that. I just have to get the drill to line up with the same spot on each, and I should be able to get the drill to go down. So the, the, the rods that come out extend, uh, the pins that come out extend the same direction and it should look even when I've finished. I've uh, pre-drilled a centre drill mark so I should be able to get exactly on the spot which is midway between the groove and the edge. And I've set a depth stop of 10 millimetres. Okay. Well, that's fairly straightforward. I should be able to do that for each one now. And here's the final shape all um, drilled out. And they're drilled to 10 millimetres. Uh, only one place where the drills come, I think, through slightly on this side. Uh, I may have to fill that hole up and re-drill it slightly further inwards, but that's all. It's just the one that's a bit, slight bit care, uh, careless. And I need to come in here now and um, cut round here with the scroll saw. That's the next job. Now I'm ready to cut this out on the scroll saw.
quality of cut looks reasonably good on the inside. Now I've got some drum sanders and I'll finish it off with that. This is the way I've been doing the sanding. And that gives a very nice finish on the inside. A little bit of time to get it to look nice and even. I've just popped this on here just so I can see how uh, it's going to look. Uh, there's plenty of room on this side. I can lift this up a little bit if I have to. But the centre of this should be in line with the um, centre of this. So I shall have to check that that's where it is. I'll probably put a cardboard disc in here just to check it. Um, and then once I've done that, um, I can place where this is going to be. And then behind this disc, this uh, gear wheel, is another gear wheel. Now, unfortunately I've got to remake this one. I made it too small. I made the odd mistake. And it engages with the teeth, with the, uh, with the pins on here. So there's 42 teeth on here, 21 on here, so that gears up uh, one turn of that does um, a whole 24 hours, so it's one, it's 12 hours and then 24 hours onto this one. And then when this goes round there's one, one pin on here that catches on those that moves it forward one day at a time. as it uh, gets to the, uh, the pin gets to those little bits sticking out um, and there's a, like a little railway track in here and it has little studs that go back into the frame here um, which at the bottom so that this sits on two studs which revolve and at the top there's just a guide to stop it falling over um, like a little brass elbow um, and so it's not it's not held at all at the top other than just a guide. So I feel reasonably comfortable with that but it's very much trickier doing this without having a clock to measure from and any mistake you make shows up somewhere and a good example of it would be if this here isn't in the middle of there. Um, but I can just try it now I suppose I'll get a bit of a rod and I'll put it in. Turning to the clock frame, you'll recall that um, I sighted through this hole here into the cross behind the back uh, so that that is the centre of where the hands go and this is going to need to be 79 millimetres on a straight line here and that's what that cutouts for is just to make sure that it doesn't foul the case. So 79 is, is roughly there somewhere about on that mark there and it's dead center of this so be easy enough to mark out drill it and um, I'll put a pivot in straight away. Uh, I haven't decided yet I, I don't know what the original was so I'd probably do a boxwood um, stud uh, with a brass pin in it. I haven't really decided but that's probably what I'll do. So that's all of the motion work now depth and checked. So it's a relatively straightforward job to uh, think about polishing and that sort of thing and staining um, the wheels and so on. Um, what I did do with these wheels they have to run very close together uh, so I thinned this one down a bit more so I went um, by one, I've got one millimetre less thickness here than I had originally which makes slightly more room available and I'll have a very thin um, veneer on the front of this one I may not even put a veneer on the back, I haven't really decided yet um, so yeah it's, it's going well, when, once this is onto its stud I can then hang this in position and see where the um, pin needs to go that's on this wheel. So as it goes around it 
it catches that and there's going to be a whole bunch of those, 31 of them round the wheel, round this. So it's getting there. I've now <coughs> put in the two mounts to take uh, the month date ring and the stud to take the wheel that operates it and I can show you how those work. Um, I did find when I was doing this I had to take a little bit off here because it's not quite concentric um, on this part here. These two studs have got rollers on them and if I get those friction free hopefully uh, they'll revolve as the uh, ring turns um, and it's these little edges of the flanges on these wheels sits in the recess in here Now the only thing I don't like is the way that the top of this requires something to hold it up and um, on the clocks I've seen in the British Museum there's like a little brass el elbow that sticks up here and I think that's rather an inelegant solution. Um, if it was me I would have had a roller or some sort on maybe running in the groove here so I'm going to think about that. Um, it doesn't have to be absolutely in the middle, but I'm sure Harrison would have put it there if he had the choice. Um, I have to think about that. Not all his clocks, um, well, in fact none of his clocks are completely original. They've all been tinkered with over the years. Um, right, now if I just put that on, for some reason this roller doesn't seem to be very keen to run with the weight of that. There we go. Um, now, if I put in a pin on this wheel, about, I don't know, about there somewhere, each time this wheel goes round, it will pick up and turn, and then when that comes around to there, it will pick up the next pin and turn that one. This part of the wheel, the calendar wheel, is uh, has uh, 31 divisions in um, and numbered 1 to 31 for the calendar days uh, and there's a paper uh, dial set in there and on the original uh, they're written in Harrison's own hand, the, the, the date figures and also um, he put in some information I think about his name and things on the inside of it where it's not visible and I'll do the same. So that's as far as I've got now um, not really very much left to do. Uh, the only thing I don't like is the thickness of these pillars. Uh, I'll probably thin those down a little bit um, they work better for ter for acting as pivots for, uh, and rollers for turning the uh, ring round. Um, so and they need to be sturdy. Um, I, I just haven't decided the best solution for those, but and, and also I haven't really got very good photographs of them. But they were a kind of wasted appearance, thinner in the middle than the outside. Um, I've left them with a bit of a flange on so that I can turn them. Um, and there's just this one pin and maybe a couple of scribe lines on this wheel to, to do and then that those wheels are really pretty much finished then. Um, there's a pin to go through this one and there's the hands to fit onto here. Um, I'll be doing that before long. That'll be in the next episode.